Madison, Wisconsin. Make some noise, baby. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are we feeling? We feeling good? We drinking? Yeah, a couple of uns. Maybe later a little. After that, maybe a little. No? All right, no heroin. Fair enough. <laughs> Knew there was a line somewhere. Just wanted to find it. Gang, it's great to be here. I'm back in jeans, baby. Yeah. I'm back in jeans. I got no circulation below my waist and I can't feel my legs. But I'm back in jeans. I was walking through the airport yesterday like I had an eight ball up my ass. Just like, eh. Breaking them in. I've been trying to lose weight. I'm taking it pretty seriously. I uh, just switched over to Sprite. So yeah, that goes for a couple of weeks. I did try keto for a minute. You guys ever do keto? The diet where you just eat pork chops? You guys don't... Listen, I don't know much, but I know a brick of cream cheese isn't a healthy alternative. I did keto, I put on 35 pounds. I was on it for four hours. <laughs> I gotta do something though. It's starting to get difficult for me to fly. Well, difficult for me and the poor son of a bitch sitting next to me. <laughs> it's getting difficult for us to fly. <laughs> and don't feel bad. Don't think fat people don't know. We see you looking at us when we get on the airplane. Yeah, we see your heads pop into the aisle like, where the fuck is he going? <laughs> Please don't be 29B, come on, man. As I'm walking sideways through first class. <laughs> my stomach just rubbing on some finance bro's head. <laughs> Man, sorry about that, Taylor. My bad, dude. Man, I'll be back to take a dump in about 20 minutes. <laughs> you might want to clear on out of here. Also, I noticed, too, people were starting to treat me different the fatter that I got. I had something real weird happen last week. I used to get my hair cut at this barber shop next to my old apartment, but we moved like six months ago, but I had to be back in the neighborhood last week, and I walked by the barber shop, and I wasn't even close with the barber, but he comes running out of the shop, and he's like, hey, man, where you been? And I'm like, oh, we moved. And he's like, you moved? Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you moved. Ooh. You moved. And in my head, I'm like, oh, this guy thought I died. <laughs> this guy for sure thought I died. And then he walked back into the shop to the other barbers and was like, he moved. <laughs> and then I heard eight barbers in unison go, I moved. <laughs> the only thing that has saved me has been the big and tall store. I love the big and tall store. But I'm going to tell you this. You go in there, you see a lot of big. <laughs> you don't see a lot of tall. You see a lot of big. But at a regular department store, I'm a 5X. Like, that's embarrassing. At the big and tall store, I'm a junior petite small. <laughs> they got everything in my size. I feel like a swimsuit model walking around this place. And it's great, all the salespeople, they're all certified paramedics. <laughs> yeah, they got defibrillators in every aisle. And I'll be honest with you, the wings are pretty good. They're not, <laughs> they're not bad. This is blue cheese, this is fantastic. My doctor's got me on Lipitor. I'm taking Lipitor, anybody else? Yeah, one guy, all right, that's a good one. <laughs> That's the fattest crowd work you're ever gonna see in your life right there. Where are my pacemakers at? Make some noise, huh? Just one guy in the back like, <laughs> No, I'm not actually taking Lipitor. I'm taking the generic version of Lipitor. Yeah, I'm an American, goddammit. That's how we roll. But isn't it funny, as Americans, there's so many things that we have to have the name brand for. Like, we have to have Apple, we have to have Nike, we have to have Adidas. But when it comes to the liver cancer medicine... <laughs> we're like, just give me the cheap shit. 
And hurry it up. I got ice cream in the car, all right? That chubby hubby's melting. Me and my girlfriend have been talking about having kids, which I did always want to become a dad. I always saw myself becoming a dad, but I messed up, man. I waited too long, and I became an uncle first. Now I don't want to have kids anymore. <laughs> yeah, when you're an aunt or an uncle and you don't have kids of your own, that's a very sobering preview of what your parenthood experience is probably going to be like. Like, genetically, you're in that kid somewhere. There's a half of a half of a half of a half of you in that child. And don't get me wrong, I have a three-year-old niece who I love, but I got this six-year-old nephew. <laughs> biggest dickhead I've ever met. <laughs> like, if I could fight this guy. <laughs> and what drives me crazy about little kids these days is that they have access to so much information. That little kids now, they act like nothing existed before they were alive. Like, my nephew says things to me like it's the first time anyone has ever said it. Like, he's dropping knowledge on me. He's straightening me out. <laughs> the other day I was with him, he gets right in my face and he goes, Uncle Hank, I bet you didn't know that Darth Vader's actually Luke Skywalker's dad. I'm like, I bet you didn't know that your mom got arrested at spring break in 1993. <laughs> hmm? Anybody tell you that bedtime story, wise ass? Yeah. A lot of shit happened before you got here, my friend. Trust me. I want you to go in the kitchen, grab me a Lunchable, and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Take your weird-ass friends with you. I don't like his friends. He's got a weak fucking crew. We could roll his crew in like two seconds. Take the whole block if we want it. His best friend is probably the weirdest human being that I have ever met in my life. It's his next door neighbor and his name's Larry. Who the fuck names a little kid Larry in the last 15 years? I was ready to call the cops on these people. You named them Larry? And this is how weird Larry is, all right? Larry's six years old. And for some reason, he wears transition lenses in his glasses. <laughs> ah, see, now I'm not the asshole anymore, am I? <laughs> and if you don't know what transition lenses are, they're regular glasses when you're inside, but then when Super Creepo Larry steps into the sunlight. <laughs> like, have you ever seen a little kid that looks like he's a pedophile? <laughs> That's little Larry. The first time I met the guy, he asked me to see my belly button. I was like, what the fuck? See my belly button? I'm like, Larry, go home and play with your dad's gun. Get away from me. Dude, I couldn't sleep for a week. I just pictured Larry standing over top of me like, let's see that belly button, fat boy. I've, uh, I've been faking heart attacks around my apartment. <laughs> Just to test my girlfriend's response time. Madison, I haven't made it once. <laughs> yeah, I'm 0 for 16 on the Widowmakers <laughs> at the Foley household. I asked my girlfriend the other day, I was like, what would you do if I suddenly died? She's like, I don't know, probably sleep in the middle of the bed. <laughs> like, okay. I was hoping for lifelong celibacy, but all right. I guess I'll cancel the trip to Fort Lauderdale next weekend. I am in a serious relationship. I live with my girlfriend. She's real. Yeah, we, uh, we fight a lot. We do. We fight. But I think that's healthy. Don't listen to psychologists or your family or friends. Fighting is... Fighting's a part of the relationship. Like, to really be in love, you gotta hate the motherfucker just a little bit. <laughs> You really do. That's what keeps you coming back. Like, you're just going to do things that drive each other crazy. Like, something my girlfriend does that I can't stand is she talks during movies. And something I do that my girlfriend can't stand is I pee on the floor a lot. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. I pee on the floor a lot. Like, I do it a lot of times, and when I do it, a lot of pee comes out. Like, I pee on the floor a lot. And the one thing about peeing... <laughs> Hold on. 
I'm 47, all right? And young guys, don't let the old guys get in your head. Don't listen to that bullshit. Oh, you better enjoy it now. When you get older, it stinks. It's not. It's actually pretty awesome. Like, do you know what the best part about being a 47-year-old man is? It's the peeing. <laughs> the best peas of your life are in your 40s, fellas. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, you know they say women reach sexual maturity in their 30s? Men reach peeing maturity in their 40s. That's as good as it's ever going to get again. Now, the having to pee, that's brutal. In your 20s and 30s, it's like, oh, I got to pee. In your 40s, it's, I got to pee! <laughs> and you barely make it to the toilet. You barely get your pants undone. But then you get this nice, thick, powerful stream. Ooh. That literally feels like two weeks vacation. You feel like you're dipping your toes into the sands of the Bahamas, just like, ah, oh. And it's going everywhere, but you don't give a fuck. And every once in a while, you get this magic fart that comes out halfway through. Ooh. Remember when your dad did that shit when you were a kid? You were like, oh my God, is he a Jedi? How did he do that? <laughs> Best piece of your life, I'm telling you. It's almost as good, and I say almost as good, as jerking off when you have a fever. <laughs> no, Madison, we don't know about this? <laughs> Fellas, do yourselves a favor. The next time you got a real high fever, like I'm talking 104, 105, <laughs> right before you go to the emergency room, just knock one out real quick. I'm telling you, it's like getting free Molly. Dude, you feel like you're coming out of a warehouse at 7 a.m. Like, God damn, that DJ was all right. But yeah, me and my girlfriend, we fight. We fight. And I'm okay with that. I just wasn't ready for what we were going to fight about. The things that couples fight about on a daily basis, it blows my mind. Like, when I was a little kid, if somebody would have came up to me in class and been like, Henry, listen, I have great news for you. In 20 years, you're going to meet the love of your life. You're going to move in with her. You're going to build a life with her. And then on some random Wednesday night, you're going to be in a full-scale death match with her <laughs> over how many paper towels you use. I would have hung myself on the ropes in gym class. <laughs> That's what I'm getting yelled at for as a grown man, how I clean up Greek yogurt. That's what I'm taking heat for. Because <laughs> my girlfriend can take a regular square of a paper towel and she can clean Afghanistan with it. <laughs> I use paper towels the way a baby gorilla would use paper towels. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend have been traveling a lot together lately. We've been together seven years, and I've noticed there's a huge difference between traveling in the beginning of a relationship as opposed to, say, seven years in. In the beginning, it's fun, it's adventurous, it's exciting. We're going to go away together. We're going to have such a great time. And after seven years, all a vacation becomes is, yo, let's go fight in another country. <laughs> yeah, let's get an away game under our belt. <laughs> Take this freak show on the road, baby. There's always a fight. There's always a fight, man. I'm telling you. There's an eye roll at security gate. You know, there's a little tension at the baggage carousel. It's almost like my girlfriend woke up one morning and was like, you know, I've never been in an argument in Boston before. <laughs> oh my God, Hank, what do you say we go up to the Paul Revere house and we embarrass ourselves <laughs> like two complete animals over who lost the hotel room key? That'll be a fun weekend, right? That's a good way to put 1200 bucks on the Capital One card. What do you say, Hank? Let's go. We, uh, we got into a fight at the Eiffel Tower. Lowest point in our relationship. Neither one of us had ever been to France, never been to Paris. Everyone's up there looking out of this beautiful city. And me and her are up against the wall doing the quiet fight. You ever try to do some slick shit and do the quiet fight? Yeah, you feel like a baseball manager pulling the pitcher off the mound. <laughs> Just like, yeah, let's not do this right now. No, come on, don't do this here. I'm telling you right now, don't do this here. You do this here, I'm going back to the hotel. I'm getting my shit and getting the next fucking plane. Do not do this here. You're the one who wanted to come here. I wanted to go to Fort Lauderdale. Do not do this here. <laughs> there was an old Norwegian guy that just turned his binoculars to watch us fight. <laughs> yeah, the fat one's getting yelled at. This should be good. 
And I didn't mean to throw the Capital One card thing in your guys' faces. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I have a Capital One card. Let's not make a big deal about it, all right? Stop, stop. We're just like regular people. We really are. Our credit score is just a lot lower. That's really the only difference. Because Capital One is the shittiest credit card ever invented. It's the only credit card I've ever had that emails me 15 times a day to refer a friend. They're real thirsty over there at Capital One. Other credit card companies don't do that. American Express is never gonna call you up in the middle of the night and be like, psst, hey, you know anybody? You seem like a real smart guy over there. How would you like to pay your rent and gift cards this month? Give me a call back, I'm at a pay phone. What the fuck? I know I'm not going anywhere though. I know I'm locked in with this relationship. I'm hanging on to her like grim death. I figured this out a couple weeks ago because she was away and I was home by myself and I hate being by myself, man. And I did something that I've never done that everybody told me that I had to do. I took myself out on a date. You ever done that? Just taking yourself out to dinner? Never did it. All my friends are like, oh my God, you got to do it. It's such a rewarding experience. You get to connect with yourself. You get to spend time with yourself. It's a really, really healthy experience. And I got to be honest with you, I never felt like a bigger fucking loser <laughs> in my life. Like, I don't know what it feels like to be married, but I got a pretty good idea what it feels like to be divorced. <laughs> Just a fat guy sitting at a Greek restaurant with a whole bronzino in front of him. The server kept coming up to me like, are you waiting on somebody, buddy? <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with my mom lately. I don't know if you guys are concerned with your parents at this point in your lives, but I really feel like we, we got to start letting that generation go a little bit. <laughs> we do. They're checked out. They really are. They're, they're checked the fuck out. Like, you know, most of our parents are on weed now, right? Yeah, once the edibles became acceptable, they really leaned into that shit. You know, but what about a chubby 16-year-old Hank Foley getting grounded for two weeks for a nickel bag of stems and seeds? What about that? Huh? All of a sudden it's cool because you got rheumatoid arthritis? Is that the game we're playing here? Like, I have ants that have never touched drugs in their lives, and now they're popping gummy bears left and fucking right. And they're like, oh, it's just a little CBD. Then I look at the bottle, I'm like, that's fentanyl. What are you doing? <laughs> my dad, I tried with my dad. I used to try to talk to my dad about current events to try to like bring him back down to reality. Remember one day I was talking to him and I was like, dad, did you see they just discovered another new planet outside of our solar system? His response was, you ever have those Tostito scoops? <laughs> The what? The scoops, the little mini taco bowl. Have you seen these things? The thing's indestructible, I'm telling you right now. I get the chicken, the cheese, the sour cream, I won't break. I don't know who's making it, maybe Elon Musk? I don't know who's involved. Could be that Jeff Bozos, I don't know. My mom's favorite thing to do at this point in her life is to tell me who died. That is my mother's number one favorite pastime. She's like the town crier of death. <laughs> she likes to go out to the back porch, light up a Marlboro light and hop on the phone and be like, you're not gonna believe this. <sighs> and the death is never enough for my mother. She always has to put more drama on the story. My mom likes to add a timestamp to the story. No matter what time of the year the person died, she has to pin the death to the closest holiday. The other day I was talking to her, and she's like, I still can't believe that Mary Pat McMenamin died four days after Flag Day. <laughs> yeah, and poor John Rogers, he died two months before Christmas. <laughs> Mom, that's October. What are you talking about? <laughs> She'll also never say the name of the disease out loud. My mother would never openly be like, it was cancer, they had cancer. It's always whispered, it was cancer. Like, she's worried mesothelioma is going to hear her talking shit. And jump out from behind the couch like, what'd you say?
crazy. <laughs> I've always been very close with my parents, though. I'm very lucky. I remember when I first started doing comedy and I moved to New York, and I was like 38 years old. I was, I was waiting tables, and I got fired from the job. And I got fired for a pretty good reason. I got fired for eating off people's plates. <laughs> Relax, I wasn't before the meal. I'm not an animal. I didn't walk into some lady, take a hamburger, take a bite, and then just back away slowly. But I had just moved to the city. I had no money. So I called my parents up, and I'm like, guys, listen, I'm sorry. I got fired, but if you could, I'm going to need help with the rent this month. And I'm Irish Catholic. So in my mother's eyes, no matter what I do, I'm still her baby, and she couldn't let it go. She was like, what? Who would fire you? You're such a good boy. Well, I would never fire you. What happened? You tell me right now what happened. I'm going to send these people an email. This is ridiculous. And I was like, Mom, I was eating off people's plates. <laughs> just a long pause on the phone. <laughs> and then she just goes, you're disgusting. <laughs> I would fire you too. What is wrong with you? <laughs> but my dad, this is why I love my dad. All my dad wanted to know is, what were you eating? What was in front of you that you couldn't contain yourself <laughs> like a human being? And the only thing that saved me is my dad loved seafood. He was a huge seafood guy. So the most expensive thing I thought to tell him was scallops. It was actually a mozzarella stick. If you <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, scallops, dad. They call me eating scallops. And he wanted to get so mad on the phone, but he was just like, scallop, shit, they're market price. You did the right thing. <laughs> You're a good kid. I'll cut you the check. So I can't complain, man. I can't complain. I've been very lucky. And I didn't start doing comedy until, until my 30s. Before that, I was really into, uh, not web design, what's it called? Cocaine. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think of it love this stuff and I remember when I had to like come clean with my parents about my about my addiction I, I had to I had to let them know what was going on and it was at a time in my life where my friends that knew were starting to become very concerned about my behavior and they were all growing up they were starting families they were buying houses they had careers and they would always call me up and they'd be like dude you got to knock it off with the drugs you don't need the drugs put the drugs away but then something big would happen like a wedding or New Year's Eve then they would call me up and they'd be like, yo, get drugs for the wedding. <laughs> yeah, we're fucking partying this weekend. But that's so hypocritical because when I show up to my uncle's funeral on ketamine, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm the fucking scumbag. You know what I mean? And I was surprised that my friend still wanted me to get drugs for the big event because I had an immaculate record of getting the drugs the night before the big event and then taking all the drugs by myself <laughs> the night before the big event. Like, you have no idea how many New Year's Eve parties I have just ruined by rolling in at 12.30 at night with a bloody nose trying to act like I couldn't get a hold of the guy. <laughs> And then being like, what do you guys say we just get a good night's sleep, huh? Hit the parade in the morning? Anybody tired? We'll stretch it out, have a little bagel, it'll be nice. <laughs> but we had this wedding, and they wanted me to get coke for the wedding. So I call my dealer, I get the cocaine, and all I got to do is ride it out for 12 hours. I get up, I hop on a train, head out to the burbs, have a great day with my friends. About 20 minutes later, I was knee-deep into the second bag. <laughs> yeah, and I do the coke all night, and then when I wake up in the morning, wake up in the morning, when I stop jerking off around noon... <laughs> I call my Coke dealer, I get a bunch more Coke, I rush over to the train station, I hop on the train, and I'm pouring sweat. I got about $500 worth of Coke in me, I got about $500 worth of Coke on me, and the gravity of the situation just sinks in, and I have a massive panic attack, and I pass out. And when I pass out, I piss in my pants. And when I come to, I'm laying in the aisle, there's seven people standing around me, and I'm like, fuck, I'm going to jail, there's no way out of this. And the only thing that saved me is one of the ladies that was there was a registered nurse. And she saw how fat I was. And she's like, you know, you might have diabetes. <laughs> to which I responded, that's it, I got diabetes. <laughs> Lady, you're good, I'm telling you right now. Because I'm the fucking diabetes kid. Type nine, you believe that shit? I got no toes. 
But this is where she messed me up. She's like, we have to even out your blood sugar, otherwise we gotta call the paramedics. And she pulls a donut out of her bag. <laughs> Plain cake donut. She couldn't get me a sprinkle or a Boston <laughs> cream. Because I don't know if anybody in here has ever done cocaine. The last thing you wanna do is eat. When you're all coked up, all you wanna do is watch lesbian porn and stick fingers up your butt. <laughs> that might just be me, but you get what I'm trying to say. And then we go pull up to the train station and I start feeling really sick to my stomach, all right? And I go into the bathroom and I try to throw up. But my dirtbag Coke dealer used to cut the cocaine with baby laxative. So when I tried to throw up, I shit in my pants. All right, the wedding's in like two hours, just so you guys know. And the only thing I had brought with me, the only thing I had brought with me because I'm an adult was a full tuxedo and a Hannah Montana beach towel that I had stolen from a pool party two weeks earlier, got caught and was demanded that I bring the towel back to the young girl whose towel I stole it from. <laughs> so I throw my pants out, I wrap the towel around me and I'm walking out the door and I call my buddy who was supposed to be there picking me up and I'm like, dude, where are you? I gotta get out of here right now. And he's like, Foley, man, I'm sorry. Your mom wanted to surprise you. She's picking you up. <laughs> yeah, I got Patty waiting for me out in the Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> and now, like I said, people were starting to have concerns about me at this time. My parents knew something was up. They just didn't know exactly what it was. But my mom sees me coming out of this train station. I got the towel wrapped around me. I'm missing a flip-flop. I got olive oil in my hair. I'm chain-smoking a heater. And I get in the car and she looks at me and she starts crying and she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and at a certain point with addiction, you just get tired of lying. You just hit rock bottom. So I just looked my mom in the eyes and I was like, mom, I think I have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Madison, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, gang. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.